Welcome to Chopstick Travel. I'm Luke Martin and today I have another compilation video, this time from Sri Lanka, the pearl of the Indian Ocean, home to exotic cuisine and ingredients. Please enjoy this video of the top 19 foods to try in Sri Lanka. This is an ancient art form of collecting the sap from the Palmyra toddy tree. So they're making a drink called toddy, which they actually ferment and it turns slightly alcoholic. They're collecting the sap in these kind of large uh, bowls. They hang the bowls up in the tree after cutting the palm leaves and then let the sap collect in the bottom of the uh, big bowl. And you can see him behind me up here. Look at that pretty dangerous and these guys actually make good money compared to uh, the local Sri Lankans because it's a short season it's dangerous work and man that is just such a cool technique to go up there and get that sap So here we have a glass of the toddy. This is fresh, but as I mentioned earlier, they will ferment it for about two to three hours and it will become five, around 5% 5 alcohol. And after eight hours, it'll actually start to turn to vinegar. So it's a very short window you have in order to try it. Right now, it's only going to be about maybe 0.5% alcohol. And that's just from the natural yeast in the air. So you still have to wait two to three more hours until you have the actual alcoholic toddy drink. So let me try this. Oh, it smells really good. Oh man, wow, and it's like almost carbonated. It's got a little bit of fizziness to it. It's sweet, mm. sweet, sour. You can definitely tell how this would turn into vinegar after a while. So I'm sitting down with Suda now. He just finished cooking at all these different Veda dishes and we're in the cave still. We've got the uh, boiled cassava leaves here. This is the cornmeal dalapa and this is the curry that I'm really looking forward to trying and then back here we've got the roti with the coconut and what a cool experience that was watching him cook this and I'll say one thing if I was on a desert island I'd want to be stuck with him because <laughs> this is incredible what he's prepared so let's dig in we got all right so he's telling me to use the dalaba here to uh, ah. scoop up some of this this curry oh that is still really hot let's try that wow mm. Mmm. Mm. Oh, great. Wow. <laughs> Absolutely no compromise on flavor out here, even with the simple techniques and food that we have here. The flavor is so good. That's Sri Lanka for you. They really don't compromise on those flavors. Let me try a little bit of this uh, boiled cassava. Holy smokes, that is seriously hot. That just came off the fire. Mmm. Yep. Hearty. Healthy, super nutritious. That's delicious, yum. All right, I'm gonna try this roti. Oh wow, it really gets crispy. That is super, super crispy. And then go in for some of the meat in this curry here. Mmm. Oh, yeah. It's super tender, yum. The roti gets a really crisp, uh, really kind of hard texture and uh, you get the little flavor of coconut in there as well. But really, I love just eating this uh, thalapa with the curry here. This is so flavorful, even though you just use minimal spices, just the way that he cooked it. It's got this really thick texture. Mm. What a day. Delicious. <laughs> Keep eating, I think you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> With the chef here, we just stopped at one of the seaside restaurants and he, he's making kotu, which is like kind of like fried rice, but without the rice, they use roti instead. He invited me back here to attempt to cook it. I've never even seen it being cooked before. So uh, he'll demonstrate first for me, of course, and then I'll try. So he's adding some chili flakes, some, uh, what's this, curry. A little bit of gravy. And you can see all the little roti kind of shreddings inside there.
Okay, we have our kotu roti. This is something I've been looking forward to try. Really interesting preparation as you just saw. And it's a very simple dish. They just use the very thin roti mixed. We ordered vegetarian. So there is carrots, there is onions, green onions, and then we've got more onions on the side, raw uh, cucumber, and it looks like a tomato. Over here, we've got a little bit of a tomato sauce. And then back here, we've got a dry chili sambal. And you can hear him going in the background, chopping the kotu. Let me try just by itself. Oh, that is really good. So most of these have very simple, similar ingredients. And for the cookies here, we're using, uh, starting with the coconut milk and then adding some rice flour, some wheat flour, a little bit of salt, some turmeric, and then some curry leaves. And they're actually gonna fry these up. Eating it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Once the batter is complete, she's heated up some oil and using this very specific device that's only used for these cookies, she dunks it in the hot oil, waits for it to reach a specific temperature that only really she knows, I think, and then she dips it in that batter mixture and it kind of sticks to the inside of this device. It's like a mold and then she puts the mold into the oil once again and after just a few seconds it starts to kind of fall off the mold and then it creates this really unique almost i don't know like clover leaf shape and that's the cookies That is big. So how much is that, like 1.5 kg or? 1.7. 1.7? Wow. That is a serious crab. All right. <laughs> so we just asked for them to bring out their largest crab. This is 1.7 kg Sri Lankan lagoon crab. Just check out the size of that claw. That thing is huge. Look at that. That's bigger than my head. Much bigger than my head. 1.7 kg. Things are definitely starting to pick up in the kitchen here. They're cooking all kinds of different crabs. Our black pepper crab is in one of those walks back there. It smells absolutely incredible and these chefs are uh, doing an incredible job too. Man, look at that. Oh, I broke a little bit of the meat. Wow. Okay, this is absolutely huge. I'm gonna have to get in there dirty and get some gravy to put on top of this. Oh, it's really slippery. Oh man, that is gonna be absolutely delicious. All right, let's try it out. I've been waiting. Ever since I knew that we were coming to Sri Lanka, I knew that I wanted to eat this black pepper crab at the Ministry of Crab, so now the time has arrived. Mm. Moment of silence. This is over. Oh. Pepper? Pepper. Yeah, pepper. Egg hopper, you can see here. 
crispy outer shell and then that nice fried egg in the middle. It looks like he actually broke the yolk up and mixed it around. And I'm just gonna try it plain by itself. There is quite a bit of black pepper you can see here, which is a very popular ingredient here in Sri Lanka. Mm. Mm. Sort of like a savory pancake. Okay, I gotta dip it, I think, in a little bit of curry here. Let me dip this a little bit. Mm. Oh yeah, man, I'm in heaven. Curry heaven, this is so good. Okay. So I'm not sure about all of the dishes that we're preparing today, but the one that I know for sure is called cool soup. So it's actually a spicy soup with tons of different types of seafood. So we had two different types of crab, one big blue crab and some smaller crabs. There's prawns, there's cuttlefish, and there's uh, some, some fish as well. So they're just setting up now. They're gonna put some vegetables in and we're going to watch them prepare the cool soup. So besides the prawn curry and the cool soup, the seafood soup, there is also a crab curry, which they are preparing Jaffna style. Really grateful to be having this opportunity to experience a local Sri Lankan family home cooked meal. And we are just relaxing until the chefs are finished preparing the meal, getting really hungry and it smells absolutely incredible. <laughs> Just about everything is finished now. The cool soup is coming together. They just added the chili to the cool soup. And let me tell you, he, he put the whole bag in. That was a ton of chili, so I know it's gonna be quite spicy. It smells so good, we're ready to eat. That was phenomenal. We are at the breakfast restaurant now, really small place, very local feeling, and they're making some fresh egg roti. So I think we're gonna have a couple things, but this is definitely not our only spot for breakfast today. <laughs> Back here we have the classic egg roti, which we saw him making outside, just a egg cracked inside of a very thin bread and then fried. And then we have two types of curry, which looks so good. This one here is a fish curry, spicy. And then this one over here is a dried fish curry and not so spicy. This egg roti next, dip it in one of these curries. Maybe I'll start with the fish curry, the spicy version. Mm. That one's not nearly as spicy as the sambal, but there's definitely a heat kick and a little bit of a seafood flavor. Let me try this other one though, which is made with the dried fish. I'm expecting it to be a little bit more seafoody flavored than the other. Mm. Oh yeah, actually that has a very strong dried fish flavor. Still very good. Something I'm looking forward to trying big time is the string hoppers, the idiapa and very interesting little dish. I've never seen anything in another country quite like this. So it looks like noodles. It's actually made with fermented rice flour and it's meant to be eaten with the curry. So I'm actually gonna take one of these, put it on my plate here, and I'm gonna definitely mix some of this curry in with the uh, string hopper. So I'll pour a little bit of curry right on top like this. Oh man, he told me that I should have a lot of curry because it might be hard to eat. And then a little bit of the uh, whole sambal. Not too much because it's supposed to be pretty spicy. Oh man, let me try that. That looks absolutely incredible. Mm. Mm. Oh yeah. Wow, that string hopper does an incredible job at retaining all of that curry. It really soaks it in, becomes extremely saturated. The curry itself is not spicy, very rich with the coconut milk flavor once again. And then that pole sambal is so good. It's got a very uh, kind of exotic, tropical taste to it from that coconut and a tinge of heat from those chili flakes. Uh, it's spicy, chicken. So we're doing
doing a walk through the Petit Bazaar and we spotted a little stall selling some type of soup. It's like a congee, so it's made with rice and chicken and there's also ginger in here, tons of spices of course, and uh, a really busy stall, lots of locals here and served hot in a glass cup, so really interesting preparation. It smells really good, let me try it. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a little bit spicy. Actually, it's really thick and quite spicy. Little ginger flavor. The rice and the liquid almost feel like the same texture because it's extremely thick. That's pretty good. <laughs> wow. <laughs> So we just brought all the fresh vegetables and the jackfruit back to the home and now she's going to cut it up so we can start to prepare the dishes for later today. So the women just used an ax to break the jackfruit up into a couple big chunks and then they got this new device which is kind of a stool that she can sit on but it also has a knife that comes out from the inside. Now she's using that knife to cut the jackfruit into smaller pieces and remove the seeds, kind of cleaning the jackfruit. The jackfruit, and check that out, there is all kinds of things going on in there. It looks really creamy. I'm just gonna go in right away and try some of this jackfruit with a little bit of rice. Oh man, I can feel that that is gonna be so creamy. Look at that. Wow. Let's try it. Mm -hmm. Wow. The taste is slightly sweet, very coconutty, and it's not spicy. They didn't put very much chili powder in there whatsoever, but the texture of that jackfruit is what makes that so incredibly good. It's a little bit starchy, almost like a potato, but it's also almost meaty at the same time, like chicken. So you can see here, we're at this little tiny roadside stall selling fresh king coconuts, and they're called king coconut for a reason because these things are a very, very important Sri Lankan ingredient. You can find them in just about everything, but having them fresh is definitely one of my favorite ways. And you can see that they've got this really unique orange color to them. And this stall that we're at is just kind of like a little shack, but they've got all kinds of these fresh coconuts. Just check all these out. So we're gonna order one up, try it out fresh. So she also has a bottle of it. It's cold, cooled, and with some of the flesh inside. Very cool. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh man, that is the perfect way to start the day. You can just taste that that is so nutritious and healthy. A little bit sweet, almost a little bit sour. Oh, got coconuts falling all around me here. <laughs> that is so good though. So we have our concoction of herbal drink. You can see here it's quite thick and it's actually served piping hot. So it's actually half curry leaf juice and half of another local herb called mukwena. I'm not exactly sure what it is. I think we'll see it later at the market, but let me try it. Oh, yum. It's actually more of like a soup. It kind of reminds me of a French onion soup, really. The curry flavor isn't as strong as I thought. And they recommended that I chase it with a little bite of jaggery. Jaggery is like an unrefined palm sugar. Very sweet. Yeah, really, really sweet. 
little snoopy. So the ladies just came around and served us up a beautiful lunch on the lotus leaf. We have all kinds of different things here. So all served on a bed of rice, of course. So this one here is called mung mas. It's made with uh, mung beans. This is cassava with coconut. This is a sweet potato roti, uh, pounded cassava leaves, uh, curried gourd, uh, coconut sambal. We've got a fried chili here and then a lake fish that's been deep fried and wow. That is so colorful and beautiful, so let's dig in. All right, I'm gonna try a little bit of this, break it up. It's almost like meat, they told me, and eat it with some rice, of course. Mm. Mm -hmm. It is like meat-like in texture, and a little bit spicy, too. This is like a total mix and match. You can grab a little bit of everything, and it all just goes so well with the rice. So I've got some cassava and some gourd with rice. Mm. Mm hmm. That is good. Super crisp still. Try some of this fried fish. Peel a little bit of that off. Oh, the rice is super good too. It's a short grain rice. Super fresh. It's the end of the harvest season now, so they've started replanting. Mm -hmm. mm. Everything is super delicious, but I really love this coconut sambal and this style of meal here, the way that the women bring it out to the men that have been working in the paddy fields is called ambula. So it's no specific recipe, but just the style where the women have cooked the meal and bring it out to the men who've been working in the sun all day. And wow, this is delicious. Uh, it smells good. There's a huge pot of curry in here that they are cooking in the back kitchen, and apparently he's gonna let me try it. I'm a little bit worried. It's hot. Just like this. No, no, no. This, this, this. Oh, is it hot? Yeah, hot. Uh, low, normal hot. Okay. Yeah. Oh. oh yeah. Wow. You can taste a little spicy. Look at this. Brinjol? Yeah, brinjol. Brinjol. Yeah. Oh, brinjol. So this is eggplant. So after she's finished roasting the jack seed, she is removing the outer layer and uh, now they've become soft, got that smoky flavor and they'll be ready to eat because you cannot eat these raw. So she's prepping a couple other ingredients. She grinded a coconut to get all of that meat out and then she's also got some jaggery which she's mixed with a little bit of water and then she's heating it up. And then she put the jack seeds with the uh, little bit of black pepper and she's gonna mix that up with a mortar and pestle and then that's actually gonna be kind of like the substitute for the rice to hold this all together, the agala. <laughs> So she took all of that jackfruit mixture with the coconut and the pepper and then she used a little bit of that jaggery water to bind it all together and then just uses her hand to form it into a ball. So it's gonna be like a sweet treat and usually they're known as Sri Lankan rice balls. I feel like it's only appropriate to start with the fresh agala that we just made using the jack seeds. Mm. So it's very kind of creamy, almost like a mashed potato, and it's got a sweetness to it from the jaggery, and you get the little chunks of nutty tasting jack seeds, and then I just had a pop of black pepper. The black pepper here in Sri Lanka is probably the best in the world. It's really flavorful. It's a nice little sweet treat. Mm. The first dish that she's preparing for us today is a lake fish curry. So using a freshwater fish and using lots of different spices to make a curry. So she uses some actual real cinnamon, Ceylon cinnamon, chili powder, lots of different spices and lots of fresh ingredients too, including garlic, onions, 
green chilies. I think it's gonna be spicy and delicious. So this is the only the first dish of many today. So once that oil is hot enough, she drops in a couple of cloves of garlic, some mustard seeds, and then the mixture of the freshwater lake fish with all of those spices. And then she's gonna let that stew away and make a really rich flavored curry. Look at this, beautiful. All natural, of course, no plastics, none of that stuff. And look at that, wow. So it's all completely blended in together. These are some crispy crackers that are a little bit soggy now but we've got all the different things, the jackfruit, the fish, the taro, the salads, and the rice. That looks incredible, and what a setting to have lunch in, too. Let's try. So the nice thing about this is you can just mix and match everything, but I am gonna go specifically for some of the fish, take out some of those bones, and get some of the rice and whatever else I grab. Let's try. first because this is a savory one and such a cool look at the shape of that that is crazy looking let's try it out holy smoke that is crunchy wow it has a light curry flavor but it's very simple and it has a little bit of a sweetness too coming from the coconut but really it's just all about how crunchy that is mm rose water flavor. So there's rose water syrup at the bottom. You can see all that red down at the bottom here. The faluda is the ice cream with, made with uh, fresh milk on top here, sort of melting. These look like basil seeds. I'm not exactly sure if they are. And then this is something made with cornstarch. And it kind of looks like a noodle. So I was told that I should stir it up very well. So let me stir it. Look at that, wow. That's a beautiful color. That looks delicious. Mm. Mm. Oh wow, that is really good. Super strong floral flavor from the rose water. And then all those little chewies in there, very nice texture. And you can definitely taste the sweetness from the fluta. Mm. Mm. We are sitting down now for our snack at the Amachi food court. The women here are making everything handmade and we've ordered from two different stalls. So the first thing we have over here is called vadai and it's like a donut shaped fritter. It's deep fried rice flour that has some green chilies and tons of onions and they're frying it up fresh, served on a banana leaf here with pole sambal, the uh, coconut sambal. Over here we have something I've never tried before. This is uh, mushroom cutlet so once again deep fried but this time with all kinds of different ingredients leeks carrots uh, probably some onions curry leaves you can see a little curry leaf peeking out here so I'm gonna try this first and it feels very soft I'm gonna break it open so we can take a look inside yeah look at that very soft oh I I'm wondering if there's I think there's probably quite a bit of potato in there too let's try that mm. So many spices in there. All right guys, that was it for the 19 top Sri Lankan foods to try on your next trip. Make sure to leave a comment down below and let me know what country you'd like to see me do next. And I'll see you guys on the next episode of Chowsick Travel. Bye.